Hey there, sales managers, directors of sales, executive vice presidents of sales and marketing, chief marketing officers, chief revenue officers, small business owners that have direct responsibility for their sales force. Bill Shockey here, thanking you for attending another edition of Crush Your Company's Quota, where today I would like to talk about a concept called managerial codependency and the death of sales innovation. Okay. Let's talk about managerial codependency first, and then let's talk about how we can, in fact, move that concept over to our sales force. This is managerial codependency. An individual like yourself, for example, who excelled in the field at what they did are given a promotion. I'm sorry, is given a promotion. Obviously, you know the job. Well, you're in the job now as manager, director, whatever it is. You're in your office. You're doing what you need to. There's a knock on the door. One of your people are there. And they say, hey, boss, we have a problem. What should I do? You've come across this problem a hundred times when you were uh, 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 an individual contributor. It's not a problem. It's a wrinkle. You know that. They haven't figured it out yet. So what do you do? As a good manager, you may say, do this. And they say, thank you. And they leave and you go back to work. But is that really being a good manager? What you've done there, think of the dynamic that you set up. What you've done is you have basically positioned yourself as the encyclopedia for problem solving. You've positioned yourself as the go-to person when an individual has problems. Is that really want to, is that really the way you want to position yourself? Think about what your overarching goal is. Is your overarching goal to simply get the job done? Or is your overarching goal as a manager to develop your people? I mean, you know, the, the, the true measure of leadership isn't how many followers we develop. The true measure of leadership is how many other leaders we develop. And it's the same thing in management. So, to, you've, so what you've done in this first situation is you've created a level of managerial codependency because the next time this individual has a problem, they're going to look at the problem and they're going to say, oh, my boss has the answer. Hello, boss. What do I do here? Do this. Okay, thank you. And they leave again. And you perpetuate it, that situation. Now, you might say, look it. I know what the problem is. It takes five seconds to solve it. Yeah, it does. Because you know what the problem is. Your people don't. It's like your kid learning how to tie shoes. They're four years old. You make a bunny ear, you make a bunny ear, you tie them together. For you, it's simple, right? For all of us that learned how to tie our shoes, it's simple. For the average five-year-old, it's hard. And it's going to take them time to do it, to figure it out. But what do we do as good parents? We help them. And eventually they figure it out. But what do we do as good managers? We have to help them. But eventually, operative term, eventually, they'll figure it out. In the meantime, we have to develop our people, even if it takes longer. Consequently, when an individual comes in and says, hey, boss, I have a problem. What do I do here? Come on in. Sit down. Tell me about the problem. Now, you're biting your lip because you know what the problem is. At the, when they're done, you ask them, well, what do you think a solution to the problem is? And have them give you a solution. I don't care if it's what you would have done or not. Your next line of questioning should be, Give me another solution that might work. And you might want to do that a third time. They can come up with three solutions. Now ask them, which is the best solution? If it's the solution that you know is the correct one, tell them, go ahead, give it a shot, see what happens, let me know. If it's a solution that you went down that rabbit hole before and you know it's not going to work, ask them, why do you think that's the best solution? What do you think is going to come out of this? Let's work this through. And work it through mentally until they find the error of their ways before they leave your office. And then work on the correct solution. 
Now, you might say, Jesus, this is going to take me 10 or 15 minutes to do this. So what? Isn't it your job to develop your people? You've just developed this person. You haven't created managerial codependency. This is exactly what we could do in a sales role, too. If a salesperson comes in and says, hey, boss, how should I approach this particular client? I don't know. Come on in. Let's sit down and talk about it. Tell me about the prospect you're going to be um, talking to. If you use um, disk or reach technology uh, where you know what quadrant they're in by their behavior, utilize that. If not, uh, have them give you as much information as they can. Ask them if they check LinkedIn. Ask them if they check Facebook. Ask them if they check Twitter. Ask them if they know anything about this person personally. Ask them if they know somebody that knows this person. And try to develop as much of a composite of a behavioral style as you can. And then ask your salesperson, okay, now that we have an idea of who this person is and how they're going to be at, uh, act and behave, what do you think we should do? And let your salesperson give you an answer. I think we should do this. Well, why? Let's talk about it. Or give me another solution for what you think we should do. And work your salespeople through. This is how you create sales innovation. Because here's what's going to happen. Whether you're a manager, uh, a non-sales manager, or in the second example, a sales manager, the individual is leaving your office and they are becoming a creative problem solver. They're doing it without you. Your job, your job in this particular situation is to make sure that your person does not need you to solve future problems. By doing that, you're creating a leader. You're creating a second, a second manager. And you're creating somebody who has the ability to come up with their own solutions to their own problems. That's exactly why we're getting paid, folks. That's exactly it, to develop these people. And that's exactly what you're doing. It's so much better in a sales role because what is happening is they're going to be able to self-coach and they're going to be able to handle all of their problems, uh, their questions on how to handle prospects on their own. Perfect, perfect, perfect. That's what we're looking to accomplish. And if you do, you and your salesperson will be on your way to crushing your company's quota. Bill Shocker, thanking you for your time. Seeing you in the next edition. Bye.